Hey, I'm Decathlon Gamer. Welcome back to PCM 23 Lions episode 108. It's only Seti Mana. It's not a major race, but Arab leads overall. Arab has been successful, and we haven't had much practice in this series of trying to protect leads, of trying to keep breakaways in check. So we'll go ahead and finish the job. It's the final stage. Uh, Bari and Banuna have spent most of the day at the front doing the chase. We kept it reasonable. Three and a half minutes was the largest it got out to. And now, in the final stages here, as we're inside 50k to go, uh, you can see other teams have picked up the, the chase. And as a result, have put their foot down, pulling them back. And now we're really just kind of fainting giving that support being part of that chase. Bari is really too far off the back and Benuna has now been allowed to just sit on. So we'll have most of our team uh, for the final run in and Arab has a plus four. De Villiers, our sprinter has a plus one. So there is a minor chance as we go over the penultimate climb of the day here. It's only about four and a half K. It's pretty short. Uh, it's not terribly steep. It's under 10% throughout. Uh, kind of yo-yoing between about 5 and 10% or 5 and 9%. Now with 34k to go, we're going to hit that one more time. Now the breakaway still has a 2 minute advantage and have held on fairly well with that. Uh, part of the problem was my two guys. We saved a lot of energy, not necessarily on purpose, but when I put our foot down even just a little bit, they were pulling that breakaway. The breakaway really did not want to work hard. So it's given them a little bit of extra energy. There's a chance that they're going to stay away, but the closest rider is like 15 minutes down. So I kind of figured eh, we'll keep it reasonable, but if they get the stage, they get the stage. It might actually make it easier on us uh, protecting the overall, and it's not like we're in a position to be winning a sprint here. But Benny Messias, Bari, Careless, all running out of energy before this climb. I think we're about to see a much smaller peloton here. Yeah, I think we need to uh, respond to this. Control it. We are that team, right? So let's be that team. Careless is still here. Okay, Careless will go briefly to set us up. De Villiers is going to follow. So Benuna... Jeez, that's not much of a lead out, is it? And that's it for Careless. On to Benuna. And there goes Benuda, Arab, and De Villiers. They nearly broke away there for a moment. We're starting to pull back some of the uh, breakaway riders and uh, dismantle the peloton quite quickly here. But this is not one of those things where I'm trying to really split the field. I'm trying to control it. And this is a good way to do that. Uh, we are seeing an attempt to attack from Tomas. Benuda is going to get the max points over the top at that KOM classification is well over. Pinto has won with 86 points. Seb Berwick took third. Uh, Santalon, one of the strongest climbers here, has done near the best. Now, for now, we have a proper split. 21 and 3. Uh, Benuna keep pushing. He's not going to keep it away, but there you go. Villiers, you're going to go ahead and get second in line now. As we've now got to watch out for these guys. And we've got enough of a gap that really there's not much that these guys can do. So uh, Benuda's going to push just as hard as he can. And Arab has plenty of energy. Why don't we get back second in line and, and De Villiers uh, will give him his last little ounce of energy here. Uh, but Benuda's not going to have anything. So once we hit on the flat, he's just going to be able to go as fast as he can. And here comes the other attacks. And there you go. 6k to go. Now we respond. Benuda's going to end up getting dropped out of this. But others are the ones really picking up the kind of chase on those two. It's another attack. And De Villiers is not going to have enough. He's going to get dropped here. It's going to be Arab Solo at the finish. 2.6k. Primed. He's got a good strong position, but he's got no red bar left. So uh, at this point, it's just 99 territory. And we will sprint with him. 
from here. But what does everybody else have left? Well, you can see at least five, six, seven guys have the ability to sprint. So no stage win, but who cares? Tomas, Mason, Gurmai, Gran, Ayuso. That's going to be a tenth for Sammy Arab on the stage. No time losses. That is an overall victory for him. Good, good way to uh, start the episode. Final stage in Catalonia. Going a little fast for now, but we still got 46k to go. Uh, I do think it's time that we start speeding up. Yeah, that's that's a pretty difficult climb, so we'll, we'll set it up to an 80 for now. This is a climb we're going to hit quite a few times, six times on our way to the finish. This is going to decimate the field, I think. It's going to split things right on up uh, in time. I mean, we're already starting to see some groups yo-yoing at the back. We've only been over the climb once. The final stage here. Just trying to finish the job, finish what we started. I thought about quick simming this stage, but we, we need to finish what we started. I, I think that's an important thing to do here. Uh, currently, we sit fifth place overall, but we have like four guys in the top 25. So there's a very good chance to score a lot of points. But from the looks of things, there's a very good chance that this field is going to be rather small. Down to 33k, but we've only been through two of six laps so this circuit is definitely not an easy one and it's we gotta ramp it up even more this time hold that position 82 effort now uh roteus here is starting to struggle let's go ahead and gel up for him uh, Mansoor has a plus three musa has a plus three otherwise we'd be in the same boat our expected was a th plus 13 today Trying to see if we've actually hit our mark for the first time in ages, because we haven't. <laughs> like, all season. Uh, that last one was a zero overall, but that's a minus three compared to what we were expected to have for the day. Lusa can go ahead and gel. Those guys are all not going to last too much longer. What? What is... What's going on with Mohira? How did he just get dropped? Ah, uh, when I said 82, like every, it was showing me everyone at front, or at least I thought it was showing everyone at front. De Villiers and Mansoor are just a little bit behind there, but yeah, like what is going on with Mohira here? Get him back in contact. Just keep an eye on positioning for the front. They are definitely blinking red here. Uh, let's up that effort just a little bit more. Make it an 84 and Mohira. Go forward. Come through 15 guys that are getting dropped, but he shouldn't have been dropped. That's kind of the peloton behind him. There's 104 riders back there. Somehow, Mansoor, uh, Rotea Sierra Musa, hanging on. Down to two laps. And I'm not sure I want to pull these guys back. I don't think he's going to really feature. What we need to do is get Mansoor de Villiers uh, forward. So Mansoor. De Villiers. And still two laps to go. So 87 for them. Mansoor. Bring us back up there. Down to 59 in the peloton. Down to three in the break with a very small advantage. And this is the penultimate base of what is a double climb, a single climb. It depends on how you want to categorize it. Roteus here is fading. And we're looking at a small group. That's 26. Is there a favorite here? There is. We don't want to be pulling them back. Yeah, Almeida's been dropped. Sit up. <laughs> Sit up, my friend. Uh, Rotas here, try to follow the Villiers. Thirteen K. Musa. Puncher. Let's go hard. Hanok and Matoni look strong, so. Yeah, they're back in contact, at least for the moment. Mansoor. Mansoor is out of energy. So De Villiers now. 
Roteus here got dropped down to 23. Let's do kind of a quick check in from Roteus here forward as we had a fairly small group and see if we have any key guys dropped. Just mostly paying attention to positions like Ortega, who sits 10th overall, has been dropped. There is Almeida at the back. Yeah. There's Biznar. Biznar, 8th place. Paulus, 3rd place. 21st for Guy. Enrique Moss, only 24th overall, amazingly. There's Vlasov, who is 9th. Buitrago is only 45th. Wow. There's a Venipole. But this is this is a game changer. There's very little presence of top 10 riders. Very little presence in this group of 23. Musa leading it out, but he does not have much left in the tank. Uh, 10k to go. De Villiers is going to make contact briefly, I think. I mean, Mansoor is still on his wheel. Mansoor, 151st. Not going to do anything. Sit up. Break that contact. Okay, Musa gets us through the bra uh, bottom. And Noak's going to take over with 8k to go. This is a medium mountain guy all the way. So medium mountain it. De Villiers in contact. There you go. That means... The Villiers can come through. And then we'll have him come all the way through and take over at the front as he's the puncher and further down in the ratings anyway. So 95 that and Henok will follow. Okay, Musa is done. Mansoor. Back to trying to hang on. And Yellow jersey, well, as green. He's only 70th. There's Almeida at the back of the group. Getting distanced once again. We're down to 12. One big final push. 300 meters here. And Noak. And Noak is just hanging on here. De Villiers. Doesn't have anything left, but watch this. The Villiers go in the stage. Okay, and nope. Follow Healy. Three K. They're catching De Villiers, and we are no longer following Healy. Gotta love that system. That's why I don't use it hardly ever because there goes there goes Healy. <laughs> 2K. Henoke sprinting, kind of. And setting up Matoni. Meanwhile, De Villiers. Sprint. Oh, Healy overtook him. I was too late to that, but even then, I don't think he had the pace for it. Healy had that. But... That was because we tried to follow, and that mechanic is just completely broken. We didn't follow him. We had his wheel. I was using him to lead us out, exploiting the the advantage there. But look at this small group. Look at this big gap. It's already been two minutes. We are very much moving up the standings. Matoni finished seventh on the stage. Hanok eighth. Uh, definitely, there's Almeida. Almeida just now crossed the line, two minutes down. So. Big, big shakeup in the standings. But Henoke was 15th at 8.38. So there were some pretty big gaps out there. But there's pretty big gaps here. We're looking at three minutes and still key guys just now reaching. Uh, Mohiro was 38th and three minutes down, something like that. So pretty big gaps out there. We do get a shakeup on this final stage. And we came close to a stage win. Kind of got screwed out of that one, thanks to the mechanic, because Henok, if he was actually following Healy, we had Matoni set up pretty damn well, because we had a lead-out man in Henok, and we would have had that sprint. If 
for Matoni. Not that he's a great sprinter, so no guarantees. But uh, De Villiers nearly hung on, and Healy was right there. I mean, we we could have had a two three four potentially, or a Venapol probably would have been too strong. Like Nasun maybe too strong to be in amongst it. But you know, we we would have been a little bit higher up, and Healy might not have won. There was multiple gaps given here. De Villiers actually 22 seconds he gets same time as Healy so De Villiers is going to help him move up he was 20th overall and then Matoni and Hanok other than the time loss there to Healy which is 32 seconds in all so that could impact us a little bit that way uh, but then healthy gap behind just behind even Vlasov lost an additional almost 40 seconds there and then two minutes to this next group including Almeida 209 to Mansoor's group, 240 to that following group. I think they were a little generous with the groupings there, uh, at least a little bit. But let's... Wow, that still only gained us one position. One position. But hey, gained us one position. A Venipol ends up winning the race, so Almeida falls from first to second. Uh, Paulus, third. Matoni, really solid result, especially with the dominance of those top two. We were nearly best of the rest one stop one step away from that uh healy moved up to fifth chevalier sixth vlasov seventh even though he lost time he moved up fuentes besnard hendok moves up five spots into the top 10 that's a big boost in points right there de villiers moves up seven spots to 13th we saw ortega going out the back uh, and you can see other guys that were nowhere near kemp carapaz we didn't see them at all van gills i saw vanderbeck and uh, go out the back pretty dang early. Vanderbecken though was involved in a crash. I wasn't sure where he was at in the standings, but uh, yeah, a lot of guys went absent. Mohira went absent. Definitely lost time. He made a mistake. He ends up actually keeping his position though. Stays twenty third. Could have easily um, lost less time. I, I'd say minutes less. He he could have been eight spots higher. Uh, if he hadn't fallen off the back. So one mistake on the day, but otherwise a very good day and good result pushed us up the standings. I mean, you know, out of our three key guys here, we gained 13 spots. So we're at Ghent Vevelgem. Uh, it's a big race. Uh, it's a big opportunity, but we're still not built for sprints. And we're certainly not built for cobbled classics either. Now, as far as cobbled classics go, this is one of the easiest ones to get through. It's a proper sprint race. There's a little bit of undulation. There's a little bit of cobbles. Neither is severe. So it does generally lead it to being a sprint finale. But not only are we not built for sprints, but our top sprinter, Matthew de Villiers, was just finishing up another race. So he's not here. The rest of the sprint team is, but the race day conditions, as a group, Tillahoon's nice, but as a group, it's, I think we have a plus one as a team today. It's a plus one? It's a plus one. I think it's like the highest we've had all season, but it's still just very neutral. That's almost a zero. It's very, very close to it. So with 86 kilometers to go here, expectations are, are low. They're they're certainly tempered for this race. I don't think we're going to necessarily go for the win. I think we're going to try to set up a sprint train and get multiple guys pushing in the final kilometer to try to get two or three riders in the top 10, 15, and you know, hope that we could pull a decent amount of points for this race. Uh, 75k to go now. Let's start speeding up as we get through what's looking like the hardest climb of the day here. combined with some cobbles, but not bad ones. 68k to go. Uh, let's send somebody to get the water now. Lottering. Lottering is the guy today. Go ahead and get that. We had a temporary least te temporary words. Temporary split in 
the peloton there it, it's yo-yoed it's come back together but not entirely just 93 left in the peloton 76 are close behind but they seem to be losing no making that contact as we stretched out uh, but here we go water just finished and just in time as we're gonna push well up from an 80 to an 88 before we hit the cobbled sectors very brief but we're talking about uh, a five-star Christmas truce sector. Now the catacombs. We are at the front. World War One. And that gets us through that. It was difficult, but very short. The last one's, I believe, mostly downhill. It's like right at the crest of the hill. And then you go down. So it's generally, as long as you're pushing hard, you'll be fine. Team's in pretty good shape. Breakaway still has four, still has 220, but it's 48k, and they don't have enough firepower, so I think we should be fine catching them. But the Peloton mostly back together now. Uh, I say that as 40 drop off and lose contact, and then regain it a moment later. Okay, here we go. The last triple hill, and let's speed things up through here. Position now very important for this stretch. That's number two. We see an attack. Germay on the attack. If there's anybody you want to go away, stay away, it's him. Here we go. This is the Kemmelberg. This is now full effort. Don't get dropped. Also that 1K gobbled sector. Here you go, 99. And yes, it does. Just before the crest, that's the hard part. That's where you can lose a ton of ground. And we do see splits already. But it's 31k to go. Can you catch them? Our split has a 45-man group chasing a front five. And we seem to be chasing them down fairly well. Now it's 25 chasing the front seven as they've caught up. Those are the favorites going for it. Gamai's still leading them out. Last two breakaway riders, but we're just seconds behind, about to make contact, and there it is. We are set for a sprint now. Last two riders to catch. Allowed to get out a little bit. They sit up. 25k. Okay, Bosco's definitely not going to be in the sprint today with his minus two. Daniel's hanging in there. And it continues to come back together. Now 114, now 118 as we catch the break finally. And immediately have the next attack, 21k. So now we are holding position, but let's go ahead and get our first bit of preparation. Bosco gel. We'll take it to about 20 and then have Daniel's gel. Even though he's a 75 sprint, he has got too little energy. We sit up. And there's going to be the next attack. We want to take control of this peloton soon, but it's a little early. It's a little early, especially for the goal of, hey, we're not going to win this thing. We want to just get multiple guys in that sprint finale. But this is how you get beat up. And that, that looks like they're going away, and they're going away, and they're about to go away, and nobody's going to chase. So it's early. I don't want to do this yet but I don't think we have a choice. Bosco, right at the front, that's good, but it's Daniels you're gonna lead out, and Isaacs. And away we go, Bosco leading the way. I put Lottering third in the line. Some of that attack was countered, but you can see so many guys just on the go, and that's now leaving us to uh, Daniels. We don't need to be going 99. Bosco just was there to kind of set us up. Let me break toe. Oh, front 20 broke away there for a second, and that was us. Okay, Bosco's done. We'll put him on auto. One more rider making a push. Slaughtering only has a little bit left in the tank, and we're already looking at 14k and heavy effort. This is not the kind of setup I'm looking for here, but let's back off a little bit more with Lottering. 
Angels has nothing to hang on to the back, and Lottering's not going to have anything to push on with, and he's already done. It's still 12k! This is too early, but the attacks are too heavy. We're going to be down to three guys. Uh, Kareem is going to have a lot of work to do here. Down to three. MacB still has enough to be involved in the sprint. Tillahun to lead him out. He's looking the strongest. If it really comes down to uh, survival, I would think that that was the situation, but it doesn't seem to be. There's still 110 here. It's not survival for them. It's survival for us. Three guys left. Front group of eight have split off. And it's back together. Now we're talking 6K. We're getting down to it. 5K. Attack's coming. Acceleration. Slowly. 4.6K. 4.2. I love having a rider with good flat rating. At the time of signing him, I wasn't so sure about it. But I'm very convinced by it now. 2.8. Kareem sprinting. He's out of red bars, so it's not that much of a sprint. Tillahun. Maccabee does not have much. we got to go a little bit late here. And we do go. Tillahun's going to do better than Maccabee. Maccabee ran out of energy. And that's not a top 10. There's way too many quality sprinters left there with some firepower that all ended up within about a bike length of each other. And that put us all the way down at 16th. That art was only 7th. Um, Horch... Uh, just 12th, that popple, 15th. Yeah, that, that's definitely something when Van Art loses by half a bike length and finishes 7th. Just too much quality, too many guys with firepower at the end, and our supposed sprinter did not make it. It was too stressful, he ran out, and so Tillahun, the lead-out guy, ends up 16th. Still worth points, though. Not a terrible day, and like I said, expectations were pretty low. Anyway, it's all good. It's all good. As we wrap up the month of March, or just about, we enter the that April, that classic season, that proper classic season. I think it'll be a mixed bag on points. This is where we start losing ground on the other teams as our advantage, our we never had a competitive advantage, but our competitive disadvantage begins to show its ugly face a bit more from this point going forward in the season. But so far, we find ourselves for the first time at the top, not for a race or two, but for a lengthy period of time and with a very healthy 1,200 point advantage over BNB and a 2,500 point advantage over third place Intermarché. For, for that, things are going incredibly well. It's it's been a great start to the season. Also encouraging, Gurmai is all the way up in third in the individual rankings right now. He's had a great start to his season. There is no sign of a Continental team, Continental Pro team, in the top ten other than us. Cross sport. Really pleased. More so. One one additional thing. Quick stat for you. Five thousand six hundred and thirty one points. We are already more than halfway to last season's final total. We had 10,900 something. It was under 11K. Double what we have right now, it's over 11K. We are more than halfway there before the end of March. Not even the end of March. Three months. January's a very, very light month on the calendar. There's hardly a thing in it. February only just starts to ramp things up. Things start to get busy in March. They stay busy through June. And then July, you got the tour. So for that alone, it stays busy. August starts to lighten up a little bit, but you have La Vuelta. And then September and October are fairly light, and there's nothing November or December. So realistically, we have a 10-month window that's a little bit light at the beginning, a little bit light at the end, busier through the middle. We've just started that middle period. We're only a month into that middle period, and we have many months ahead of us to, to come but we're already over halfway to our grand total from last year. And we were the highest ranked Continental Pro team last year. But remember the new rankings, we ended up second when you counted a world tour team being demoted who was above us, even though we were in the top 10. At, at this point, I'd say we are going to be much higher 
in the rankings this season. We are not going to be eighth. It was eighth last season, right? The final. I think we had been sixth until the last few weeks, but final tally was eighth. Uh, at this point, just looking at what's around us, I'd say we're probably not going to be any worse than top five or sixth, but those scores can change so much. It's still early enough in the season that they can really change a lot. But like I said, 10,900 was good enough for eighth a year ago, and we're more than halfway to that point now with a lot of season less left to go. I mean, we're, we're not even a third of the way. So looking good on that front. The, the very quick check-in on our team, Arab, up a few more spots now, 28th, already closing in on 2,000 points. And remember, he had virtually no points until the Tour de France last year. He had almost nothing. So he just continues to pile those on. He has actually overtaken his teammate, Mason Samuels, now, who drops to 29th. He was top 25 so he has fallen off a bit to start this season but that's mostly because arab's kind of taken over the reins as top dog shimway is 34th and then a pretty big drop off after that but you're seeing guys like matoni and jansen josh de villiers uh, hanok all moving up kareem despite everything despite the he's gotten a lot of support in the comments he is good to an extent he never finishes terribly well, even though he is generally one of the final lead-out riders for us. If there's going to be a sprint, there's two to three riders behind Kareem. Most of the team went earlier than Kareem, and they still outscore him regularly. As good as he is for us, and he is a wonderful domestique. He plays a role so well with that 79 flat rating makes a huge difference in controlling the setup for the sprint, controlling that sprint train, uh, controlling that peloton. It's fantastic for that, but that's all he is. He, he's just incapable of doing anything more than just that. But all in all, I mean, three guys in the top 35, and number one as a team so far this season, fantastic. But again, we're entering that classic season where we're going to have a lot of misses not too many hits and we're gonna get into that grand tour season where we're gonna have a lot of misses and not too many hits theoretically but there are signs that we've gotten better there are signs that with objectives and preparation we're clearly better than just jumping into race after race uh, nationally speaking morocco seven ninth place looking pretty good there as a team, we are third with eight victories. Seven of those over the last calendar year have been Sami Arab, and I believe that we're talking about all seven of those being this year. Has he already picked up seven victories this year? Maybe not that many. It's got to be close to it, though. I know we won two stages and an overall, and then we just now, with Sedimana, won a stage and an overall. That's five right there. Where those other two are off the top of my head, I can't think of, but uh, Tim here, number one in the world at this stage of our season with seven victories. That's going to do it for this episode, though. I'm Decathlon Gamer. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Be safe out there. Bye for now.